My name is Peter Deng from Africa Development Community Education and Africa Development Publication Company. Uh, what we are doing today is a conference. And the conference, the Federal Abuse Company, is bringing uh, different presenters from different uh, institutions. And they will be talking about the issues facing the community in Australia. And we will take also the feedback from the community the aim of the conference. We now welcome Dr. Sintino Atemdeng, who will be talking about the negative characteristics of Afro-Australian community in the media. Dr. Sintino Deng, is an experienced counsellor, educator, researcher and trainer and has experience in mental health, settlement and family and parenting. Dr Deng completed his PhD at Victoria University where he investigated changes and challenges in South Sudanese family dynamics and parenting practices in Australia. His thesis examines recent transition in South Sudanese Australian parenting practices from the perspectives of both parents and youth, draw, drawing on nuanced cultural understandings and contexts to explore various challenges and transitions in parenting after resettling in Australia. Santina will share some of his research today with us and we welcome you, thank you. Um, I also acknowledge uh, the traditional owners of the land. I thank you all for coming. Um, my presentation, as it was mentioned, will focus on uh, the media again, uh, connecting to a job presentation. Um, there are always uh, two uh, options, I mean, two areas to look at when we talk of uh, uh, the issues that are facing our communities. Um, one of them, connecting to the previous speakers. One of them actually to look at um, what can be done at the community level, at the family level, and then at the community level before it goes to the service providers, to the government, and to wherever it goes, um, so that issues can be addressed at different level. Um, so that is really important to have that understanding as uh, William suggested. Uh, to really have presentation uh, to the community so that they can have that visual understanding. Um, uh, I'm not going to go around with any uh, you know, methodology and what have you, but I will go straight into some of the things that I just want to talk about. Some of them are what uh, Bichok already presented. Um, uh, we were together with Bichok for four years. <laughs> And uh, as it was mentioned in my research, uh, I mean in what my thesis in the, in the introduction, uh, my research look at the four uh, different areas or journey, if you like, to really take me to where I would make my conclusion. Uh, one of the questions that I asked was, um, what were the parenting practices that South Sudanese came with into the Australian context? This is really to help uh, create some understanding. And when I was interviewing people, some people were saying, but you South Sudanese, you know uh, what sort of parenting we came with. And I said, no, no, I just want to document it from your perspective. And then I look at the, um, uh, what has changed after coming here? And what were they, uh, how were they mediating those changes within this new environment? What are the impact of those changes? And that lead to, um, to the conclusion, what can be done to help. So these are uh, some of the things that uh, you know covered by Bishop earlier um, in regard to culture and traditional and family structure. Um, but coming to a new country, there are always challenges, and I'm sure that is what a lot of other presenters, like the previous presenters, have highlighted. Uh, there are immediate transitional challenges that are encountered when you come to a new uh, environment. And these tra transitional challenges include uh, parenting, and legal, social, and culture. And in this regard, when we talk of, parent, of parenting practices, that goes to what I mentioned earlier, because um, coming from another country, you have your own way of parenting. Now you are in a new environment. 
Um, your parenting practices that include physical disciplining are not uh, applicable in this new environment. What I'm doing here, I'm just giving you the content before I launch into some of the uh, areas that I that that resemble my uh, title of my article or, or my paper. Um, the legal side of it, uh, as it was mentioned by Bishop earlier, the government is considered as interfering in the family, and that create a lot of problem uh, within the family and with the government and the trust the service providers uh, that are involved within the family. So difficulties applying uh, tra traditional, traditional parenting style create a lot of problems within the family because uh, most families, they talk of feeling disempowered. They, they don't feel like they have any power to discipline their children. And as it was from the statistics, we can see that the offend are actually the, um, the youngest group they are offending a lot, and uh, and because of our small number, it affects us all in one way or another. And there are so many impacts in regard to that. Um, parent bases children on transitional power structure. Uh, we have uh, either intergenerational conflict or even transgenerational uh, issues that are happening, and some of them include. Uh, transgenerational or intergenerational trauma uh, that get passed on from uh, family, parent, children. Again, all of these are some of the things that are encountered when you are, when you arrive in your new environment. We all know that. Um, changes and challenges within the family and then parenting support are actually uh, um, the major contributing factors here. Uh, like many other refugees, uh, South Sudanese have experienced a lot of uh, pressure within the family, and this can be connected, like some of the presentations Sarah was presenting about earlier. Uh, some of them would be in regard to their post-migration, uh, the displacement, whatever that happened in their journey before coming to Australia. Uh, we know that many spend many years in refugees camp, uh, some destitute and uh, struggle uh, to function in that environment. For example, I kind of seen many research in the past that Kakuma, uh, which is one of the largest refugees camp in Kenya, considered as non-productive uh, uh, camp because of the hostility, whether to do the environment itself, and that is the weather, um, and also uh, the community, the host community that was around uh, and, and the issues or the conflict within the communities or refugees communities that are in that environment. Um, again, coming uh, to a new environment, uh, many family members you have to renegotiate the way you used to do your parenting back home. You have to now adjust and we know that the older we become, the harder it is for us to learn something new um, and whether language or uh, a different way of parenting can be really challenging for a lot of parents and, and because there are no support, proper support sometimes. And this can create a lot of problem within the family like what uh, Bichok presented earlier. The husband, wife, partners, children, so all will um, there are a lot of family uh, breakdown or relationship breakdown in our communities. There are influence of acculturation that are involved in this. And we know that acculturation is when you are trying to make sense of uh, your new culture and or when the, uh, your culture, the way you do things, where you come from, uh, come in contact with the new culture. Uh, there are always struggle in, in relation to that. Um, and these changes within the family often uh, create conflicts, as I mentioned in the past uh, slide. Changes in gender role, that again goes to the show Um I thought maybe focus on this area is really important because there are some risks and protective factors for mental health within uh, the community, within uh, generally called community, not only South Sudanese, 
We know that the risk factors may be to do with the uh, post uh, trauma or post migration or post uh, displacement, and uh, and this can increase uh, the struggle within your new environment. Um, Sometimes the countries where people go through has some of the thing that Sarah mentioned earlier uh, can be really dangerous, uh, or they might have been exposed to a lot of issues more than the journey that they left home uh, itself. Uh, some of them uh, talk about what happened to them in Egypt, and some horrific stories um, that are sometimes some are documented and some are not. They. I do a lot of, I've been doing a lot of counseling with men's life in Australia. I know um, what is happening in the general community as well in regard to men behaviors and, and what happened. I'm not blaming men, I'm a man myself. But, um, but we know that when men are not um, contributing within the family, uh, it affects them in many ways. It can lead to domestic issues, domestic violence. It can lead to withdrawal, it can lead to mental health, and so many other things. But, but the community also have uh, protective factors as well. Uh, we all have resilience, most of us who have gone through a lot. And uh, some of us uh, either talk of our journeys, some of us didn't even talk about. I remember when I was back in New Zealand, uh, can talk about some of my journey, and I can see some people getting emotional. But I'm not emotional anymore. It's because I've been talking about it and I have resilience uh, in that regard. So uh, other things when there are material available can help in terms of being uh, protected, uh, availability of education, uh, and so many other things can help improve the life in your new environment. Uh, again, these are some of the issues uh, that are related to mental health because sometimes mental health is not something that is looked uh, closely within our community. But there are a lot of stigma uh, involved with mental health. Uh, shame, uh, being seen as somebody who is mentally ill because back home someone with mental health would be considered as um, someone who is out of his or her mind or mad, crazy and so many bad words. Uh, that really prevent people from seeking help. But again, uh, education, psychoeducation can really help um, change a lot in the community. Social isolation, um, because you end up in a community where we're becoming more individualized. I have spoken to many, uh, some older Australians uh, here, and they said the society doesn't used to be like this. We used to be much closer, and we support one another, but now we just drive apart. And, and you find some people just in their own houses, not really connected with anybody. This is not something that we were used to. We come from a collectivist culture where a village would know each other. Parenting would be easier because everybody will help look after your children, and you look after somebody else's children. So rearing children was very, very easy in that regard. Uh, coming here also, you don't have family members that are around you. Even if you have relatives, they might be somewhere in the eastern suburb and you are in the western suburb. You're not going to be able to support each other. Even if you live in the same suburb, you're not going to be able to support one another as well because you have to work or doing other things. Uh, lack of meaningful activities uh, can really lead to uh, can create problems in terms of mental health. Uh, difficulties engaging in social skills, as Bishop mentioned, some would choose to go and play uh, dimness or other things, especially men, and um, as a way of finding their, uh, you know, try and find social connection or to survive the environment. Um, lack of knowledge about healthcare system, language barrier, and all of these are uh, contributing factors and barriers to so many things. Um, we need that um, uh, education for the community themselves. And as I said before, at the beginning of this, there is need for looking at the issues and addressing them at different levels. Mm -hmm. 
at the family level, there are a lot of things that need to be tackled at that level. There are a lot of things that need to change within the family to be able to look into. And some of, because uh, I haven't presented anything here about parenting program that I run, but what is important about that is there is need for a parent to really find ways on how to create some kind of equilibrium between their traditional parenting styles and the new environment and try to combine them so that they can have a better way of, 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 looking, uh, of looking after their children or parent, uh, parenting their children in this environment because you're not going to be able to parent your kids the way you used to parent them back home. Whether a parent can understand that or education become really crucial. And I, I've seen that over the years, um, this area, that is why I did a lot of research in this area. Parenting has been overlooked. And sometimes there is that hurry to go to just jump to the um, addressing youth issues. But actually it should be addressing family issues. Because these youth come from somewhere. If you want to address the issues, look at the root causes, where they come from, and what can be done to help their parents. Because their parents are not only looking after these children that are on the street today, there are other young generation coming up. And if we don't look into that, there will be failed generation to come. So looking at the parent, to help them, to empower them, to be able to have some tools, parenting tools, to look after their kids, and to make sure that the other coming generation are not going to be some of the kids that are on the street today. And then the service providers also uh, to collaborate with the community and people that uh, have ideas or expertise within the community to be able to create that uh, level of support at that level, and the government as well. So there are three uh, levels. Thank you. Another Enox production. Young bullets are the girls dedicated to the mothers. Oh, well, man. here we go, so what? Uh. Strong mama, strong mama, strong mama, you are too strong mama. Inch away, inch and it put, who gonna get put, dear mama. Strong mama, strong mama, strong mama, you are too strong mama. Inch away, inch and it put, who gonna get put, dear mama. I've been moving from east to west, north to south. Chiran na tonga yin mama. You are my number one. I'ma sing this melody for you, mama, mama. Ooh. I've been praying to God every day. Kuwi kwan, kuwi dodge. Mama, you are so good. Whoa, whoa. Mama, you are so nice. It's for me say, Mama, you are better than the race. You lead every man that come on me way. Mama, you are made me so strong. You made me who I am today. Ay, ay, ay. From zero to hero, Mama, you are made me. From zero to hero, Mama, you are made me. Whoa. Shukran, Mama. Shukran, Mama. Shukran, Mama. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Feel this song Strong mama, strong mama Strong mama, you want to strong mama In Chawe, in Changibu Who wanna dead to be a mama Strong mama, strong mama Strong mama, you want to strong mama In Chawe, in Changibu Who wanna dead to be a mama Mama, you are my everything Mama, you are my everyday and night Everything is gonna be alright Everything is gonna be Gadi chili tease the rabana Mama dear K in cha cha Oh me love you In ya In ya mama you know You're the strongest of women I know The strongest of women I have Me can do without you Can live without you Can breathe without you mama Strong mama I strong mama I Strong mama you are too strong mama In cha wet In cha in who Strong mama, strong mama, strong mama, you are too strong mama. In chawe, in changi bu, ubana de tu dia mama. Mama mama mama, mama mama mama, mama mama mama. No matter what condition, she's there for me. Even when I feel sick, she cares for me. Oh, she's a loving mother. 
Almighty, I feel so blessed. Having you in my life, mama. You are good, mama. You are so strong. You are everything, mama. Aku jengu bagami, aku jengu wayegi, mama. Aku jengu wayegi, aku jengu wayegi, aku jengu wayegi.